Welcome to Wild Mama's YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about discomforts that you'll find in the second and most likely the third trimester. But because this month is all about second trimester, we thought we'd talk about those discomforts. My name is Sherry. This is Sarah. We are midwives in the Las Vegas area and we deliver home birth babies. True story. So we made like a whole list of discomforts that our clients complain to us about. So this doesn't mean that there aren't discomforts you might experience right. past it, but just the most common ones that we get. So the first thing on our list is back pain. It is very common. Once you kind of hit that 20 weeks, especially uh, your uterus is in line with your belly button usually. And so it does start to kind of cause the round ligaments to pull a little bit on your lower back. Doesn't mean you can't have it before then or after that, but that's typically when we start to hear more and more about back pain. You can do cat cows, which are different yoga poses, especially towards the end of the day to just kind of stretch out that lower back. We tend to get like a sway in like that lower back right above our sacrum, the more pregnant we get. So that's really where you might want to use like heating pads or using a support bell modify your movements a little bit and I think posture mm -hmm. is really important yeah. I think sometimes I don't want to use the term lazy but in pregnancy we do get a little bit lazy because we have that extra weight and so mm -hmm. we don't necessarily keep our posture and so I do talk to all my clients about purchasing an exercise ball mm -hmm. because sitting on an exercise ball you can't slouch so mm -hmm. it kind of helps your back because you need a nice strong core muscle that supports that extra weight that you're mm -hmm. carrying. Obviously you're putting on anywhere from 25 to 50 pounds. That's a big mm -hmm. shift in a short period of time. It's all about creating healthy habits or unhealthy habits. You gotta yeah. create some healthy ones. And if you start them now, it'll save you in the long run. Um, the other thing we get, Sarah calls it lightning crotch. Oh, SPD. <laughs> <laughs> or lightning crotch, that too. At some point of your pregnancy, especially when baby turns head down, which mm -hmm. doesn't really always happen until your last trimester, but baby mm -hmm. may move into a position that puts a lot of pressure vaginally. So you might get like sharp shooting pains. The good news is, is that's not what a contraction feels like. And there's not really a lot you can do about that. Obviously, if you've got extra blood flow and you're swollen mm -hmm. and Obviously baby's position plays a role in that, but maybe some Epsom salt baths can yeah. help. But just yeah. kind of relax those muscles. And, and again, you can use warmth if you want to, sometimes a heating pad. I felt like I was kicked in the crotch a lot with my second and warmth just played such a big role. Yeah. And I think it goes back to activity too, mm -hmm. like staying active so that you have a nice strong core muscle. And I think something worth mentioning is round ligament pain. A lot mm -hmm. of individuals, really worry about round ligament pain and what you need to remember when you have a baby here where those organs go those organs all get displaced up here when you feel pain down here it's not your organs organ pain would be up high so that's why we talk about upper quadrant that's when we start worrying when we feel upper quadrant pain when it's low it's probably round ligament pain honestly when you get round ligament pain it's just your body saying you're moving in a way i don't like your uterus sits in there like a hot air balloon it connects in four different places two of them are to what we would call two is round ligaments and so when you move your uterus isn't necessarily moving at the same way you are if you imagine and so it pulls those ligaments modify and listen to your body yep we do get complaints sometime about especially when baby starts getting up into your diaphragm being able to take mm -hmm. a deep breath yep. again just a perfect time to practice that deep breathing, relaxing in your space, mm -hmm. and posture. posture. Cat cow again mm -hmm. will help baby move into a position that might relieve it a little bit. Like for me, I'm a little claustrophobic, or a lot claustrophobic. It made me feel claustrophobic. You have this human growing in your body, and you might feel a need to like reclaim your body at certain times of your pregnancy. However, you've dealt with anxiety in the past now would be a good time to work on that breathing. Well, let's talk about gastrointestinal stuff mm. that happens. Yep, progesterone is a fantastic hormone for helping you maintain a pregnancy, but it can also cause some stuff. Loose stools, gas, heartburn, a lot of unpleasant discomforts that come with that. Yeah. Luckily, there are some things that we can do for that. There are some digestive herbs that you can try. If it's happening a lot, then probably you wanna support your gastric system with a few different things, probiotics, some digestive herbs. If it's heartburn, 
we have papaya enzyme chews. And there's over-the-counter stuff. And Tums it's, will work as well. But I think it's too about like what you're mm -hmm. eating. In the first trimester, we're okay with you eating carbs because that's yeah. how a lot of people survive. In the second mm -hmm. trimester, we really don't want you eating that many carbs. If you can eat mm -hmm. more vegetables and proteins, your digestive system is gonna be happier for it yeah. for a lot of different reasons. And so those carbs are so much sugars and you kind of want to slow down on that. Watch what foods give you heartburn. And being regular, I think, plays a really big role. And what are you doing to be regular and to maintain mm -hmm. that going to the bathroom? You should be going to the bathroom a minimum of once a day. If you aren't, you need to either be eating foods to get that fiber or you need to be supplementing something. And alkaline foods help a lot. Your celery, broccoli, greens, all of those things will help sort of neutralize some of that acid too and move things along because those are all fiberful. And that really takes us into like this idea of skin rashes. Super common in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So if you've never had eczema or psoriasis or any of those things before, mm -hmm. sometimes they play a role. Remember your digestive system is like the number one tax system in your body. Your mm -hmm. skin being your largest organ and a way that your body does get rid of toxins. Remember that all that stuff that we talked about for gas, heartburn, yep. is gonna apply to those skin rashes as well. Yeah. Obviously doing topical stuff and mm -hmm. taking baths with different things are gonna help soothe but they're not gonna take care of the problem the problem is internal and we love milk thistle that we tends to be our go-to our milk thistle dandelion actually there's a, a nice mix I've had some clients that have tried a coffee alternative where it's like roasted dandelion root mm. sometimes that will help too with digestive stuff especially if it's gotten to the point where you have skin rashes or or edema cups, things yes, or, or swelling yes. or, mm -hmm. and I should point out like swelling in your feet is pretty normal mm -hmm. they don't even count it as a sign of preeclampsia anymore because most individuals do have swelling. Sometimes a milk thistle dandelion is a perfect combo mm -hmm. to kind of yep. catch both those things. I always think you should talk to your care provider about all of these symptoms if they aren't mm -hmm. asking you because it's so much better to catch problems early that you can get on top of mm -hmm. than wait till it's such a problem that it becomes now not that correctable. Talk about hormones and headaches. They're definitely linked. <laughs> hormones and headaches. And sometimes it just takes a process of elimination to figure out which one is causing what. Sometimes we're just dehydrated, obviously, that can cause headaches. So that's like an easy thing to just see if that's the reason. Here where we practice, it is a desert. So sometimes water is not enough. Sometimes people just need a little extra electrolytes or something to just help with those trace minerals to get back on track. So usually just drinking some more water is like your first line to figure out if that's what it is. If it's not, sometimes we just need to do some things to help support your body and its healthy hormone production. Do you have some favorites that you like to recommend? Yeah. I think the combos for pregnancy, I'm normally a fan of the single mm -hmm. herbs, but I think when it comes to pregnancy and hormones, mm -hmm. I think the combos are your best bet. Wish Garden makes some really good stuff, yeah. Herbally Grounded makes some good stuff. And, they're, really and they usually, balance. Yeah, yeah, balance. And I know mm -hmm. they have a lot of stress kind of relief specifically for pregnancy because they take pregnancy safe herbs and mm -hmm. I think it does have to be a combo it is it is mm -hmm. one of the few times that I say it is true you need a combo two more things on the list you guys are doing great I had mentioned that increase of blood volume and so a lot of individuals really noticed that you noticed it maybe vaginally or um, it's why sometimes we get to that last trimester we see some signs of anemia but if you are prone to varicosities or varicose mm -hmm. veins there are some herbs that you can take internally that will help with that or we have clients who wear compression socks yep. as well as baths and Epsom salts there and are some topical try, things yeah. if you have like a small mm -hmm. but most people don't have like oh it's this one little dude right here yeah. So I'm like, where so, do you want me to put that salve? I will take a bath in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But if you have like one, like if you have just one that aches all the time behind your knee or something, yes. you can try witch hazel or witch hazel distillate. There's a, a couple different forms. I think horse chestnut is a yeah, big one. Horse chestnut's mm -hmm. another one. But I really like Veracom. I know we're really plugging herbally grounded today. <laughs> Um, but there's yeah. a couple of products that we just, you know. Veracom works really well. It works The so only well. thing is that there's a couple things in it that can, mm -hmm. uh, they're diuretics. And so they, yes. we just kind of warn our clients they have to drink more water while they're taking it. But yes. it does work really well, especially mm -hmm. for individuals who have a lot. Varicosities mean they're vaginal, they're in your birth canal. And so why 
you want to kind of be on top of that is you might just have some extra bleeding once mm -hmm. that kid comes. If one ruptures, being on top of those varicosities can help and it's uncomfortable. So yeah, they usually ache. There's a line between like I'm pregnant and I'm going to put up with just some stuff that's happening to my body yep. and you know what? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to be going through this. Yeah. There are some alternatives and solutions. One of the reasons why that elasticity kind of starts to get worse during your pregnancy is sometimes we could be maybe deficient in vitamin C or something like that. So making sure that you have those fresh fruits and vegetables in your diet are super important um, because we need those for our vascular system. The last one <laughs> is the inability to sleep. Oh yeah. Mm. That's a big one. Some of that is going to be, you have to get up tonight to pee. Right. It's kind of preparing you for not getting a full night of sleep when baby comes. Think of it as some practice, right? But certainly that uncomfortableness when you start getting heavier and getting into a comfortable position. I have a lot of clients who make like these little nests with pillows yes. to get comfortable when they sleep. So that is a thing. And so whatever you need to be comfortable. I know there were some of my pregnancies. I slept better mm -hmm. in the recliner in my living room. Yeah. Are there herbs that you can take that can help you sleep? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And so most things when it comes to sleep are okay. We carry plant-based melatonin and mm -hmm. valerian and there's some sleep combos. They're going to help you not necessarily put you to sleep, but maybe help you just sleep a little mm -hmm. deeper when you And it kind of depends on what the problem is. Like if it's just like pain and uncomfortableness, if it's just straight up insomnia, or if you feel like you've got circular thinking that happens right mm. before bed, turning off our devices an hour or so before we go to bed at night. Good advice for everybody before you mm -hmm. go to bed. Don't be doing work. Don't be... Don't pay your bills. Oh my gosh, so many of my clients were watching <laughs> these serial killer movies and I'm like, oh my gosh, don't do that before bed. <laughs> yes, that lack of sleep is just kind of mm -hmm. shutting our minds down a little bit and yeah. quieting our minds. It's a good opportunity to practice that because once you have kids yep. and it's about self-care. I think with all of these things, you're listening to your body to go, okay, how much of this physical, how much of it's emotional, how much of it's mental, like how much, how do I juggle it and how do I find that support? I think really good things to talk to your care providers about. It's yeah. why as midwives, we schedule longer appointments with our yes. clients so we can talk about these things. It's a good thing to do with your care yes. provider. And if your care provider is not providing that, where else are you going to get it? Is it a family mm -hmm. member, a friend, a doula? Where is your check base throughout your pregnancy when you aren't feeling like yourself and you you need someone to kind of bounce stuff off of so that those maybe unhealthy moments don't stay inside you have an opportunity to process mm -hmm. I'm gonna close with a story one time I was shopping at Costco and I got a phone call from a client's husband you already you know it's a problem when that happens <laughs> and he's like my wife is melting down Aww. she couldn't fit into one of her outfits she started crying and I told her how beautiful she was and she just wasn't buying it and I don't get it. You may have moments where you go, oh my gosh, my butt has gotten big. I didn't know this was going to be a sacrifice I was going to have to make. That cute husband, I was like, she just needs to cry about it and talk to you about it and don't, don't tell her it doesn't matter. Don't tell her don't that. fix it. Yep. Don't. Dismiss it. What they are thinking and feeling is a true mm -hmm. thought, you know? And some people embrace that, those changes, and some people struggle with those changes. And that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't affect the labor, the birth, the parenting. It's just in the moment. You're just having a moment. When you have that moment, it's really nice to have someone to bounce something off of. So yep. thanks for joining us. Share down below what your biggest discomfort was in your second trimester and how you got past it. If yep. you found this video helpful, like, subscribe, ring the bell so that you can get <laughs> notified. We make videos every week and we launch them on Tuesdays. Sometimes we are at a birth and it ends up on a Wednesday and we are very sorry for that. <laughs> we really appreciate you tuning in. We will see you next week. So I always point my finger. You do. I always <laughs> am like, <laughs> I remember waitressing. I was waitressing when I was pregnant with Cora and I'd be carrying like a tray and all of a sudden I'd have this like shooting pain and be like, thank yeah. you. Thank Thanks you. for that. Thanks. Good job, Sarah. Yeah. Well, we got to take our own advice. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes her stuff is a little dark, but I love her. <laughs>
sometimes she says stuff that is like me and I go, <gasps> she goes, advertisement. She goes, I just <laughs> wanted to sound fancy. And I was like, I say that. <laughs> I'm gonna use my pointer finger. <laughs> I am Shoot McGavin. <laughs> yep, absolutely. We gotta, we gotta practice what we preach, man. It's true. Dang it. Sucks. Although, as a midwife, you get on call so much, I feel like I can fall asleep like that. Oh, like can't. my head hits the pillow. You can. Yeah. It's a superpower. That's not me. It's a superpower of mine. I, I have a really hard time quieting my mind, so then I'm like, do I have to pee? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe. And then I've thought about it. I'm like, now I might as well just pee. And I go, and a few drops of pee come out, and then I go lay there, and my mind thinks... And I'm like, do I have to pee again? Hmm. <laughs> like, that is seriously. So I'll say to Adam, I'll be like, this is my final, final pee. 